This one will undoubtedly make your mind tickle. A thief broke into a house and robbed it one night. The next day, he broke into two houses, robbed everything, and fled. On the third day, he broke into three houses and stole all of the cash and valuables. On the fourth day, he went into four houses and did the same thing. Detective Mayhul decides to get to the bottom of this. He observes the pattern in which the thief carries out the robberies and attempted to decode it. The first theft. The second theft. This is the third heist. And here's the fourth theft. It is a fact that five robberies will occur on the fifth day. But which five houses? Mayhul looks at the houses carefully, immediately decodes the pattern, and figures out which of these five houses will be robbed next. Can you? Is it A, B, or C? Let's hop on to the answer. The next robbery will take place in the houses with pattern C. If you are smart enough to notice, the houses make a number pattern. One number is exactly the shape of Roman number one. Similarly, two Roman number is exactly the shape of number two, and it's the same for the other two. Now, the next robbery will take place in houses built in the shape of Roman number five. Let's hop on to the next riddle. Slanky and Shorty live in a small town in Southern California. Their story is very interesting. Slanky commits robberies on dates that are multiples of two. For example, the second, fourth, sixth, and so on. And Shorty always commits robberies on dates that are multiples of five, such as five, ten, fifteen, and so on. Can you tell me how many times will they commit the robberies together in February? Take your time and let me know your answer through comments. Here's the answer. Since February has either 28 or 29 days, and because Slanky will commit robberies on even dates like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and Shorty will commit robberies on dates like 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on, together, they will commit robberies twice, once on 10, and once on 20. They go to a building to commit the robbery. The first floor window is open. However, Slanky will not be able to enter the building, and Shorty will be unable to reach the first floor because of his height. How do you think they'll be able to rob the place? Take your time and let me know your answer through comments. Let's hop on to the answer. Slanky will help Shorty to reach the first floor. Shorty will rob the place and will sit on Slanky's shoulder and they can easily escape. Interesting, wasn't it? Let's move on to the next one. Once, the teacher was teaching in the class when a paper plane smacks her in the face. She becomes very angry and asks, Who threw the plane on me? No one raises their hand. The teacher, on the other hand, knows who did it. How? Can you tell by looking at the students? Think and comment your answer. Let's see the answer. Look at the color of this boy's notebook and the color of the plane. It's the same. That means he was the one who flew a plane at the teacher. Let's now look at the next riddle. Sitting in a class and attending a lecture is quite boring, isn't it? Every one of us has been there. Miss Rosie was in the middle of teaching a class when she heard someone snoring. She turns around furiously. Who did it? Who is dozing off during the lecture? When she looked around at the students, she noticed that they all had their eyes open. She then resumes teaching when she hears someone snoring for the second time. She immediately understands someone is sleepy. Their eyes, however, are open. Can you guess who is sleeping by looking at the student? Let us know your answer by commenting. Let's see the answer. This is the boy who is sleeping. Look at the other people's eyes, they're blinking, but this boy's eyes aren't, because he has eye stickers on his glasses. The teacher takes off his glasses and caught him sleeping. Let's go on to the next riddle. Detective Mayhul was chasing a cunning robber. During this foot chase, the robber enters a shopping mall. 
and Mehul follows him inside. The manager of the shopping mall informs Mehul that three new workers had joined that day. But he finds four new workers. This means that one of them is definitely the robber in disguise. Mehul decides to check their ID cards to expose the criminal. This is the first ID card. This is the second ID card. This is the third. And this is the fourth. After looking at all the ID cards, Mehul instantly understands which one of these belonged to the robber. Can you guess? Comment your answer below. Let's now look at the answer. The blood group on ID number 3 is BA+. But such a blood group doesn't exist. This means that it was a fake ID card. Mayhul notices this and arrests the robber instantly. Let's jump to the next riddle. Martha rushes to the police station one day and pleads for help. Sam and I got married yesterday. We left early this morning for our honeymoon. We got stuck in a bog on the way, and our car couldn't move. We attempted to pull the car out, but were unsuccessful. I left Sam there and went exploring the jungle in search of help. He was dead when I returned. Explains Martha. Inspector Josh arrests her right away. Why? Why did he do that? Think about your answer and share it with me in the comments section. Here's the answer. There are two points that brought Inspector Josh to this conclusion. First, look at Martha carefully. She is wearing a white dress. How can it be so clean if they got stuck in the bog of mud in the middle of a jungle? Secondly, if they were stuck in the middle of the jungle and didn't receive any help, then how did she reach the police station? Interesting, wasn't it? Let's move on to the next one. Eric and Jessica had been talking for quite some time now. One day they decided to go out for a coffee. This was the first time they were going to meet in person. Jessica tells Eric. I will wear a pair of red clips in my hair. When Eric reaches the cafe, he finds that there are three girls, and surprisingly, all three of them are wearing red hair clips. Poor Eric, can you help him find his date? Think and let me know your answer through comments. Let's hop on to the answer. Observe the scene carefully. There are two coffees on the table number three. This means that the girl is already with someone. The girl sitting on table number two is already enjoying her coffee and a book. Clearly, she isn't here for a date. The girl on table number one is wearing this beautiful dress. Seems like she is here for a date. Eric goes straight to her and says hi. They recognize each other. Very sweet, wasn't it? Let's hop on to the next one. Detective Mayhul was chasing a criminal. During the foot chase, the criminal enters a huge castle. Mayhul follows him inside. As he enters the mansion, he was shocked to see a diffused bomb. Beside the bomb was a wooden stick and a rope. He picks all of them up and walks around the mansion in search of the criminal. He comes across three doors inside. Behind the first door are flames of fire that will burn Mayhul to the ground. The second door is enclosed with iron rods, crossing them will not be possible. Behind the third door are walls of ice which will never melt. Which door should Mayhul choose? Let us know your answer in the comments below. Let's now look at the answer. Mayhul will light up the bomb through the fire in door 1 and will throw it inside the third door to break the wall of ice and escape. Let's go to the next riddle. Mayhul was walking down the road one day when he slipped and fell into a manhole by accident. He was going deeper and deeper into the hole. When he gets to the surface, he realizes it's a cave. He tries to find a way out of it when he comes across three doors. Now, which door is the correct one? He begins to think. Suddenly, a voice says. To exit the cave, choose door number seven. If you choose the wrong door, you will die underneath the large rocks. What is the number of the seventh door? Think and let me know your answer by commenting. Let's see the answer. The designs on the door are created using numbers and their reflections. Door 2 will become 7 if the designs are separated. Mayhul decodes this and exits the cave through the second door. Let's go on to the next riddle.
Maddie and Josh, a well-known couple in the thief community, intend to rob a jewelry store. The shop is closed, and the lock appears to be quite complex. Josh pulls three keys from his toolbox. One of three keys will certainly unlock the door. However, if they use the incorrect key, the siren will alert the guards. Look at these keys carefully, can you tell which one of these will open the lock? Take your time and let me know your answers through comments. Here's the answer, the second key is the right one. If you noticed, the lower line is missing in the third key. And the first key won't even fit into the keyhole, as we invert the key unlocking. They smash the glass, rob the place, and flee. Detective Mayhul arrives on the scene. He is informed by the security guard that he has contacted the police and Detective Mayhul. Thank God you are here Detective Mayhul. I went to the washroom when the robbers robbed the place, please catch the thieves. To his shock, Detective Mayhul announces that the security guard has also robbed the place. Why? Why did he do that? Can you tell? Think and let me know your answer through comments. Let's get to the answer. Take a look at these glasses. The robbers used lasers to break the glass, and they are perfectly round. While this glass is shattered, it appears that the security guard took advantage of the situation and stole a few articles. The police immediately arrest the guard. Mayhul follows Josh and Maddie in order to catch them. He ends up in a bank's parking lot. There he finds three cars. Can you tell which of these cars belongs to Maddie and Josh? Comment down your answer below. Let's get straight to the answer, it's quite muddy, which means that anyone who moves in that area is sure to leave footprints. There are no footprints around the first car, and it has a lot of dust on it, indicating that it hasn't been used in a while. Only one person's footprints can be found around the second car. However, there are two distinct footprints around the third car, this means that the car belongs to Josh and Maddie. Detective Mayhul deflates the car's tires and waits for them to arrive. Meanwhile Maddie and Josh are trying to unlock the bank's safe. Look at this safe, can you decipher what the password is? Let me know your answer by commenting. Let's take a look at the answer. The solution to the code is the second number plus the third number minus the first number. As in the first equation, 3 plus 2 minus 1 equals 4. Similarly, in the second equation, 4 plus 5 is equals to 9, and 9 minus 1 will give an 8. So, in the last equation, 9 plus 3 will be 12 and 12 minus 4 would make an 8. Maddie enters 8 as the code and unlocks the safe. They steal all the cash and gets into the car when they see Detective Mayhul. Detective Mayhul understands to NDS that the couple arrive at the place in a different car and post-robbery, leave the place in a different one. When Detective Mayhul checks his car, he realizes that the tire is punctured. The couple fools Mayhul and flee away. This couple's wit surely deserves a like. Let's hop on to the next one. Roger was stressed out because of his work. He was drinking tea while working. Hannah, bring my tea. He says to his daughter. She brings the teacup and leaves. After a while, the light goes out, and by the time it came back on, Roger was dead on the floor. Detective Mayhul rushes to the crime scene right away. He notices that Roger has left a clue before dying, which is the letter, N-A, from the killer's name. Tina, Joshna, and Hannah are Roger's three daughters. All three of their names end with the letter, N-A. Mayhul immediately realizes who must have killed Mr. Roger. How? Think and tell me your answer via comments. Let's have a look at the answer. When Roger died, he left N, A, and was holding T, which means Tina. Mayhul immediately catches her. Let's move on to the next riddle. Mr. Walter had a very boring day today, because there were no customers in his shop. He was also very tired, so he dozed off on his counter. 
A man came into his shop while Walter was sleeping and noticed him. He stole $1,000 from the counter and fled. After some time, the man returned to Mr. Walter's shop and took $300 headphones. He gave him the same $1,000 note as payment. Walter took $1,000, kept $300, and returned $700 to the man. So, how much of a loss did Mr. Walter have? Let's see the answer. Mr. Walter lost a total of $1,000. The $1,000 note that was stolen came by to the shop, but then Walter gave headphones for $300 and returned $700, so that's considered a loss. Let's see the next riddle. Dr. James worked as a senior doctor in a mental hospital. He is found dead one day. He had gone to check on a patient the day before he died. Mayhul rushes to the crime scene to attend to the matter. He notices the patient is sleeping, and Dr. James is lying dead on the floor. After some time, the post-mortem is revealed. According to the reports, the doctor died as a result of strangulation, as rope marks could be noticed on his neck. But Mayhul finds it strange, because there is only a bedridden patient in the room, so where did the rope go? Mayhul then goes through the CCTV footage and has doubts about three clips. Footage 1, the doctor is speaking to his patient. Footage 2, the doctor is lying on the floor, while the mentally ill patient sits on the bed. Footage 3, the doctor and the patient, are both lying on the floor and in the bed, respectively. Mayhul immediately understands how the doctor died, after looking at all of the footage. How did he figure this out? Look at the doctor's shoe in the second and third clips. His lace is missing in the second, but present in the third. The mentally ill patient killed the doctor with his lace and then put it back on. Let's move on to the next riddle. Four people worked in a paddy field. One day, one of them is murdered. Since there were only four of them, there was a high chance that one of the remaining three has committed the murder. Detective Mayhul arrives on the scene and interrogates everyone. Says the first man, I was preoccupied with my work. Someone else must have done it. Says the second man, He was a very dear friend, I was deeply saddened by his demise, why would I kill him? It was definitely someone else. Says the third man, I was neither his friend nor his enemy. There was no need for me to murder him. Mayhul figures out right away who committed the murder. How? Tell us your answer by comments. Let's see the answer. Look at all of their pitchforks. The first man's tool has four sharp prongs. The second one's has three, and the third man's tool has again four. Now, look at the body of the man who was killed. He has six strikes on his body. This means that the person with the tool containing three prongs attacked him twice. Mayhul quickly catches the second man. Let's move to the next riddle. Once, Ben was reading the newspaper on a Sunday morning. He reads that the premium lottery's biggest draw of the year is about to take place. According to the lottery, the first prize winner will receive $100. The second place winner will receive $50 in prize money. The third winner will receive a prize of $20. Finally, the day had arrived for the lottery winners to be announced. Many people gathered around the location to witness their good fortune. The third place winner is announced. Ben walks up to the stage, shows his ticket, and receives his prize money of $20. The second place winner's position announces. Mayhul walks up to the stage, displays his ticket, and collects the prize money of $50. Finally, the first place winner is announced. However, three people show up on stage to collect the prize money. Now, two of the three tickets they have are fake and only one is real. Detective Mayhul rushes there to check their tickets. Can you tell which of these tickets 1, 2, or 3 is real, and which is fake by looking at them? Think and let us know your answer by commenting. Let's see the answer. Take a look at the pattern of ticket winners of 1 and 2. On the side, there are three lines. 
It matches up with ticket 1, whereas ticket 2 has 4 lines and ticket 3 has 2 lines. This means, the tickets are fake. Mayhul quickly realizes this, and the person who holds the real lottery ticket, wins the first prize. Let's move on to the next riddle. Tom lives in a small town. He lives in a house with three roommates. John, Tony, and Jason. Today was Tom's birthday. Since the morning, he had been receiving birthday calls and gifts from friends and family. His father also sent him a gift. It was a very expensive watch. When his other roommates saw it, they were extremely jealous. Tom hides his watch above the cupboard as he notices that all three had their eyes on it. Later, he fell asleep. John walks into Tom's room around 2.10 p.m. Tony walks into Tom's room around 2.30. And Jason walks into Tom's room around 3 o'clock. After some time, Tom wakes up and notices that his watch is missing from the cupboard. He begins looking for it. Tom then discovers the watch in the trash, but it is broken. Who broke my watch? He asks his roommates. All three, however, deny touching his watch. But one of the three has damaged it. Can you figure out who did it? Think and let us know your answer through comments. Let's see what happens. Tom woke up around 4 p.m. and noticed the time on his broken watch. It was 2.35 p.m. Tony went to Tom's room around 2.30, which means he broke Tom's watch. Let's move on to the next riddle. A car was zooming away in full speed, to an extent that it broke all speeding rules. As a result, it gets chased by the police. The car stops near a restaurant and two young girls emerge from it. Inspector Gag blocks them outside and asks them. Which one of you was driving the car? You will get arrested for over speeding. Both of them say in unison. It wasn't me. It was, it was her. her. Both of them start blaming each other. But Inspector Gag is able to figure out which one of them was driving the car. Can you guess? Let me know you answer in the comments. Let's now look at the answer. Look at this girl's shoes. How can someone drive so fast wearing heels? This means that this girl was over speeding. Let's jump to the next riddle. One day, Mayhul's car breaks down. He needs to get to Don Bosco school right away. As a result, he decided to take a ride from someone. Two boys arrive there. I have to go to Don Bosco school. They both say. Yes, we are going there only. Mayhul checks their identification cards. He checks person A's ID card. He then checks person B's ID card. They are both Don Bosco students. Now, who do you think Mayhul should get a lift from? Person A or person B? Let's see the answer. He should get a ride from person A, look at person B's birth year, 2010. He is 13 years old. This means he is not legally allowed to drive a car. Let's move on to the next riddle. Mayhul was walking down the road when someone sneaked up on him from behind and knocked him out with a stick. When he regained consciousness, he found himself locked in a basement. This is my house. But why is it locked? He had a spare key hidden in the basement. By looking at this image, can you guess its location? Think and let me know your answer in the comments. Let's now look at the answer. The key was hidden in this bottle. He draws it out and unlocks the door of the basement. Let's hop on to the next riddle. Larry calls Detective Mayhul in a haste to inform that his wife Serena had committed suicide. Mayhul reaches the crime scene instantly. He examines the crime scene carefully, while Larry informs him that they had been in an ugly fight. Serena pulled out a poison pill bottle and consumed it, which became the cause of her death. Detective Mayhul extracts the bottle and sends it to the lab for further testing. The lab in charge confirmed that it was in fact Serena's fingerprints on the bottle and the pills that she consumed are the contents of this bottle. But this isn't a suicide, but a murder. By looking at Serena's fingerprints on the bottle, can you guess why did the lab in charge think so? Comment down your answer below.
Let's now look answer. Notice that the fingerprints can only be seen on the bottle and not on the cap. Then how did she open the container? This means that Larry has strategically placed her fingerprints all over the bottle but did not do so for the cap. Hence, he was caught. Let's now jump to the next riddle. Josh has worked as a cab driver for 10 years. He frequently gets into arguments with his passengers. One day, he is found dead in his taxi. Detective Mayhul is summoned for an investigation. It appears to be a murder. Mayhul thinks to himself. Josh got into a dispute with three people that day. Detective Mayhul immediately interrogates three people. Aaron says, I took a cab to college. When I arrived, he requested me to pay him extra money, which I refused, and an argument ensued. Why would I murder him for a few bucks? Nina says, I was at work when I got a call. It was a medical emergency. My mother was admitted in the hospital. I needed to get to there as quickly as possible. Josh was driving very slowly. We had a fight because of this. I left after he dropped me off at about 2 p.m. I'm completely clueless. Brandon explains, Around 1 p.m., I was returning home from the supermarket after finishing my grocery shopping. I was carrying a lot of bags. He was demanding extra money for all of my belongings. Because of this, we had a disagreement. Mayhul carefully records their statements and quickly arrests the murderer. How? Who do you think killed Josh? Think about your answer and leave it in the comments section. Let's hop on to the answer. Out of all three of them, Nina was the last one to travel in Josh's cab. She booked the cab to go to the city hospital. If you noticed, Josh was found dead in his car right in front of the hospital. This means that she killed Josh. Interesting, wasn't it? Let's move on to the next. Lily calls Detective Mayhul and informs that her husband had been shot. When Mayhul reaches the crime scene, Lily explains. We were just talking. Out of nowhere, there were two gunshots and Bob was killed. The man was wearing a mask. He ran before I could even react. Mayhul instantly figures out that Lily was lying. Looking at the clues, can you guess why he thought so? Let us know in the comments below. Let's now look at the answer. The house was a mess, which means they were probably fighting before her husband died. The argument escalated and Lily shot her husband out of spite. Look at the bullet holes on the wall. They are of two different sizes, which means two different guns were used. Mayhul understands this and arrests Lily immediately. Let's jump to the next riddle. Ben lives in a huge bungalow. One day, a robbery took place at his residence. He quickly calls Detective Mayhul to his house. Mayhul checks the house entrance and the lobby, but sees that the lock has not been broken. The thief broke into the house using the hidden key and committed robbery. Ben says, I had hidden the key underneath this large rock a few months ago. I believe the robbers were aware of this key. Mayhul realizes right away that Ben is lying. Why did Mayhul think so? Think about it and tell us your answer through comments. Let's see what happens. If such a big rock is kept in the garden, there won't be grass below it, but it has grass. This suggests that the stone was recently kept here. Mayhul understands that this is a fake robbery and that Ben is lying. Let's go on to the next riddle. Eric lives with his dog. One day, his dog goes missing. Eric looks everywhere. In the garden, on the street, and everywhere else. But he can't find the dog anywhere. While searching, he runs into his friend Tony, who informs him that a vehicle came in the morning to pick up dogs. Eric quickly arrives at the place and describes his dog's looks to the van driver. The van driver shows Eric four dogs that resemble his dog. A, B, C, and D. One of the four is Eric's dog and the others are strays. Can you tell which one is Eric's? Think carefully and tell me your answer by commenting. Let's have a look at the answer. Eric's dog is option C. The dog is wearing a belt around his neck. Belts are only worn around the necks of pets and that's how Eric recognizes his dog and takes him to his home. Let's move on to the next riddle. Tony usually drives to work, 
but because the weather was nice, he chose to ride his bike. He was shocked to see a huge scratch on his car when he returned home in the evening. He immediately calls his children and wife. His wife says, I was at the grocery store since the morning, I've just returned home. I have no idea. His son says, I was playing with my friend in the neighborhood. I just returned home. I'm completely clueless. His daughter says, Dad, I have been studying since the morning. I just got out of my room. I don't know anything. Tony, on the other hand, understands who is lying. How? Think and let me know your answer in the comments. Now, let's see the answer. Take a look at the house next door. There is a lock on their door. This clearly means that they are not at home and his son is lying to him. He could have scratched by accident. Let's see the next riddle. The most beautiful artwork in the world was on display at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Everyone was drawn to the painting. Many people came to the museum only to see it. The next day, the painting goes missing. I need to contact Detective Mayhul to find out what's going on. The owner thinks to herself. Detective Mayhul arrives at the crime scene. The owner assures him that the museum had three guards last night. She suspected that one of them had stolen the picture. Detective Mayhul questions all three of them. Guard 1 says, I was patrolling on the outside, I don't know what happened. I only went inside once at night, to check on things. Guard 2 says, I was inside the museum last night, but I didn't particularly care about the painting. I have no idea who the thief is. Guard 3 says, I was patrolling outside the museum, I only went inside because I needed to use the restroom. I have no idea what happened. Detective Mayhul carefully records their statements and immediately understands who stole the painting. How, if you missed a clue, watch the video again. Can you work it out? Please share your response in the comments. Here's the solution. Look at their images. All three of them took a picture with the most beautiful painting in the world. Take note of the background in these images. Guards 1 and 2 had clicked the snapshot at the museum. However, the background in this image is different. Guard 3 took this photograph in his home. This implies that the iconic painting is now at Guard 3's house. Jason was a pretty good youngster, except for his horrible habit of constantly keeping his hand in his mouth. His mother, Martha, used to chastise him for it. She was fed up with this habit and sought the assistance of Detective Mayhul. What do you suppose Mayhul proposed to her? It's not that difficult, believe me. Let's have a look at the answer. Detective Mayhul proposed that Martha make Jason wear loose underwear. He'll be so busy fixing it that he won't have time to keep his hands in his mouth. Wasn't this hilarious? Let's get to the next one. Ron was going home from college when he was pushed from behind. He collapsed to the ground and couldn't really see who had shoved him. Fortunately, Detective Mayhul happened to be nearby. He immediately came to help. Please help me, Detective Mayhul. Someone shoved me from behind. I couldn't see his face, but he was wearing glasses. He also wore a jacket, shoes, and a hat. Explains Ron. Mayhul runs in the same direction as the man. He finds a jacket, hat, and sunglasses in front of a coffee shop. Mayhul thinks that the man must have entered this cafe. There Mayhul sees five persons. Can you tell by looking at these five, who is that person? Think and let me know your answer in comments. Let's go on to the answer. Notice that the first person is wearing a jacket. This is clearly not his jacket. The second man is sitting with his sunglasses on, indicating that they do not belong to him. This lady is already wearing a hat, therefore these items aren't hers either. The fifth person is wearing slippers, but he did not shove Ron since the individual was wearing shoes. Clearly, the fourth person shoved Ron. Mayhul immediately catches him. Wasn't it interesting? Let us now proceed to the next one. Detective Mayhul was at his desk when he received a phone call, informing him of a hotel robbery. He arrives at the hotel and interrogates three people. One of them says, 
Sir, there was heavy snowfall yesterday, so I was in my room all day watching television. The other guy says, Sir, I consumed alcohol yesterday. I wasn't in my senses. How can I commit the robbery? The third guy says, I went out for some reason. I returned to the hotel about 10 minutes ago. I don't know anything about the robbery. Detective Mayhul carefully records their statements and immediately understands who committed the robbery in the hotel. Can you think and let me know your answer through comments? Here's the answer. It's the third guy. He said he went out and returned 10 minutes ago. But how come there are no footprints outside the hotel except Mayhul's? Interesting, wasn't it? Let's move on to the next one. One day Mayhul gives an interesting challenges to Kushal. Kushal, you have to take out the coin from this bottle, but there are two conditions. First, you cannot take out the rubber cork, and second, you cannot break the bottle. Okay, Mayhul, challenge accepted. How? Can you tell me how Kushal will take out the coin? Think about it and tell me your answer in the comments. Let's see the answer to this. Kushal pushed the rubber cork into the bottle and then took out the coin. Like the video for Kushal's smartness. Emma, Amelia, Jessica, Hannah, and Sophia are the five sisters. Emma is cleaning the floors. Amelia is playing a video game. Jessica is on her phone, playing snakes. Hannah is playing hide and seek. Can you guess what Sophia is doing? Think and let me know your answer through comments. Let's hop on to the answer. It's quite simple. Sophia is playing hide and seek with Hannah, and you can't play hide and seek alone. Let's move on to the next one. While traveling along the highway, Detective Mayhul noticed a man lying on the road. When he went to check on the man, he discovered that he had already died. How could someone be killed on the highway, especially so far from town? Mayhul goes to the nearest toll booth and inquires about all of the vehicles that have passed through it today. Three vehicles passed through the toll today. Mayhul contacted all three owners and thoroughly inspected their automobiles from the inside out. This is car 1. This is car 2. This is car 3. After inspecting the cars, Mayhul realizes who committed the murder. Can you guess? Take your time and leave your answer in the comments section. Let's have a look at the answers. Take a close look at the second vehicle. A red glove is lying in the corner, and the other glove in the pair is in the dead man's hand. That's how Mayhul understands that the owner of the second car committed the murder. Daniel has been murdered in his own home. This incident occurs around 4 p.m. His wife calls Detective Mayhul to her home right away. Mayhul arrives there and thoroughly inspects every corner of the house, but he doesn't find anything. He then questions the maid and the cook. The maid says, I went to sir's room around 3.30 to give coffee. I didn't go back after that. The cook says, I never go to Daniel sir's room. I was preparing dinner in the kitchen. Daniel's wife explains, I went to his room around 3.45. He was working on his computer and drinking his coffee at the time. Later, at 3.50 p.m., I went back to my room. Mayhul immediately realizes who must have committed the murder. How? Think and tell us your answer through comments. Let's see the answer. When Daniel's wife returned to her room at 3.50, the coffee mug was on Daniel's table. However, when he was killed, the coffee mug was not on the table, and only the maid could take it away. The cup can also be seen on the dining table. This means, the maid killed Daniel when she went to his room to take the cup. Mayhul immediately catches her. Let's see the next one morning, Rick was murdered. Detective Mayhul reaches the crime scene immediately. As he enters Rick's house, he finds some clues. Hmm. The murderer must have entered through the window, killed Rick and escaped. There were four people present in the house at the time of the murder. Mayhul decides to interrogate all of them. The maid says, I have been busy cleaning and dusting since morning. 
I don't know anything. The cook says. Sir, I have been in the kitchen preparing food. I don't know anything too. Rick's daughter Lily says. Sir, even I don't know anything about dad's murder. Rick's wife Lorraine says. Sir, I was on the terrace, exercising. I don't know anything. Upon hearing all the statements, Detective Mayhul instantly understands who killed Rick. Can you guess? Let us know in the comments below. Let's now look at the answer. Rick's wife killed him. Shoe prints were found on the crime scene and, out of the four people, only she is wearing shoes. This means that she sneaked inside the room through the window and committed the crime. Mayhul arrests her immediately. Let's jump to the next riddle. Pete has just gotten married and loves his wife very much. He has to leave for a very important business trip tomorrow. His wife sees him off, but as he reaches there, he misses her too much. He decides to text her. What are you doing? I was missing you so I prepared some good food. And she sends a picture of the table spread. Pete instantly understands that his wife was cheating on him. But how? Can you guess? Think and let me know your answer in the comments below. Let's now look at the answer. Look at the mirror in the picture. Clothes of a man are clearly visible. When Pete left his house, the bed was clean. This is how Pete concludes that someone was with his wife and she is cheating on him. Let's jump to the next puzzle. A wicked witch imprisoned a princess in her castle. This became the new headlines, causing a commotion throughout the kingdom. Prince Charles decides to save the princess. But here's the catch. The key to witchcraft's power is hidden in the castle. She can only be defeated when she leaves the castle. The prince and princess were well aware of this. So, the princess wrote a note the next day, informing the prince of the witch's departure time from the castle. It was only a hint. She sent the note to the prince in secret. Examine this note carefully. Can you decipher it? Let me know your answer through comments. Here's the answer. The note says Ted only drinks apple yogurt to win onions. Here, if you take the first letter from each word, you will get today too. The prince decodes the code and understands that the witch is going to come out of the castle at 2 p.m. today. Our prince is quite smart, isn't he? Let's move on to the next one. A group of thieves is stealing television sets from a local manufacturing facility and loading them into their van. They were about to leave, suddenly they hear cop's siren, and immediately, cops have arrived. They have no chance of escaping. The cops had arrived, but the thieves are not get arrested. Why? Can you guess? Consider your answer and share it with me in the comments section. Here's the answer. When the cops come, they begin reinstalling all of the television sets in the manufacturing unit. When asked, they explained they were coming to deliver television sets. However, they were rather late with the delivery. So, the cops dismiss them as delivery boys and depart. Wasn't it clever? Let's get to the next one. Someone shoved Peter off the hotel terrace and he died as a result. This news creates a commotion in the hotel and the manager orders that the hotel will be locked from the inside. Nobody is permitted to leave the hotel. Detective Mayhul arrives immediately to investigate the situation. He checks the hotel's visitor list at reception and suspects two persons because only they knew Peter. I went out today and just returned. Clay arrived before me. I'm sure he shoved Peter. I arrived here after Josh. He is responsible for pushing Peter. Detective Mayhul thoroughly examines their vehicles and immediately determines who pushed Peter. How? Can you guess? Consider your options and then let me know your final answer through comments. Here's the answer. Peter stayed in the hotel and did not leave. His car is the first to be parked. Josh's car is parked between Peter's and Clay's. He would not have parked his car between two automobiles if he had been the last one to arrive since he would not have had enough space to get out of the car. This suggests he was the first to arrive. Clay clearly arrived late, 
Whereas Josh arrived first, Detective Mayhul recognizes this and swiftly arrests Josh. Wasn't it interesting? Let us proceed to the next one. It was a beautiful sunny day. Torvi decided to go shopping because it's been a long time since she had done so. She got dressed and went out early in the morning. Even though it was nearly evening, Torvi did not return home. Her husband kept calling her, but she didn't answer. He then calls Detective Mayhul and informs him that his wife Torvi went shopping at Hallmark Mall in the morning but hasn't yet returned home. He also tried to call her, but her phone is also out of service. Mayhul rushes over to the house and questions everyone. Torvi's daughter says, I was going to go shopping with mom today, but she cancelled the plan with me and told me she was going with someone else. Her maid says, Today I was going shopping with ma'am, but she asked me to stay at home. Instead, she said she was going out with a friend. Her husband says, I've been in the office since afternoon. I tried calling her several times, but she never answered. When I got home, she wasn't there, so I called you. Torvi's friend claims, She didn't ask me to go shopping. I was at home all day. You can also check my CCTV cameras. I don't know anything. Mayhul immediately understands who has done the kidnapping. How did he get it? Let's look at the answer. The maid is lying. She was not there at home. Look at the Hallmark Mall bags behind her. This clearly shows that she went shopping. Mayhul immediately catches her. Let's move on to the next riddle. Look at this image carefully. Can you guess? Who is an idiot? A or B? Let me know your answer by commenting. For more such interesting riddles subscribe to the channel.